Everybody's looking great. We're ready to start. We want to welcome you. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is August 12th, 2022, 5 p.m. Jerusalem time. And this hour is Shabbat, our favorite hour of the week. And today's Shabbat is being led by the world-renowned Lena from Northern California. And uh, we are just happy to be see each other again. And many of us who are on the call were actually got to hug each other and see each other face to face and have meals together in Hirnhut, and, and it was great. And those of you who didn't got to participate in, uh, in the live stream on video. And uh, we are um, growing, 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 growing as a family, growing closer together, and it's just wonderful. I, this a week in Hirnhut was probably one of the, uh, great moments of my life and I've had a lot of them and uh, uh but this was amazing so we want to welcome everybody and um uh, Lena we're going to bless you and then turn it over to you mm -hmm. Father we just we just thank you for Lena we just bless her in the name of the Lord we're just so thankful Lena for your dedication to the Lord and for your um commitment to the global watch and we just declare over you God's favor his incredible awesome favor. We're just declaring his favor surrounds you like a shield. And uh, everywhere you go, you're growing in his favor. We just declare his wisdom over you, that he would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation constantly, that you'd be growing uh, in favor with God and with man. We just declare renewed strength. And we just say over you that, um, and over your family, that uh, the Lord would protect you, that he would hide you in the shelter of his wings, that no harm would come to you, no destruction near your tent, and uh, that you would, you would always have plenty of provision and just a, a deep, close relationship to him. We're declaring that this year, 2022, is a breakthrough year for you, and the best days of your life and your ministry are ahead of you and not behind you. And may the joy of the Lord be your strength. In Yeshua's name, amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hello, everyone from all over the world. Welcome to the Shabbat call. Um, so um, basically, what we're going to do today is um, sort of, um, so I'm personally learning more about the Shabbat this year than ever, um, and trying to um, maybe more wholeheartedly uh, walk it out sort of according to God's will versus our cultural customs, whether it be the Western Christian customs or Jewish customs, right? Uh, cultural customs, what is God's perspective on it? So I am, um, I've been very blessed by walking more closely in the ways of God uh, around the Shabbat and I was curious to know what do other people do on Shabbat? And um, because in a way it is a personal walk, um, uh, even though it is understanding God's purpose and heart for the Shabbat, but then how do we observe it with him, maybe a more personal thing. So, um, so then Uli um, encouraged me to actually do some type of like an interview session with different people. So thank you for those of you who volunteered. And um, so there's few that are lined up that, will, that I will interview. I'm going to start off with a prayer and we'll just dive right into the interviews. And then um, we're gonna close with communion. So if you wanna, run off and get your elements, um, please go ahead, but be prepared at the end, we'll do communion. All right, and um, let me say a prayer and then we'll get started. Um, I don't have a worship song lined up. <laughs> you guys are waiting for that. We're just gonna start with prayer. So yeah, Father, we, um, we always wanna know your heart, Lord. We want to know your purposes. We want to understand your heart. We don't, um, and, and we ask your forgiveness, Lord, for the measure of things that we do more in alignment with our tribe or our cultural things, our traditions, and we lose touch sometimes with you and your heart. And um, 
Father, sometimes even um, we go away from your ways because we're so into our cultural things. And uh, Father, show us your heart always. Bring us back always to your ways, your purpose, your heart. And that we would do all in, in a partnership with you first. Holy Spirit, to be led by you first. Um, Lord, even this hour, we commit to you. Let, as we listen, Father, help us um, more hear your heart, Holy Spirit, than even what is being shared. Um, uh, let your message come through clearly. Let every ear be open to hear what you have to say to us in this hour. Um, and Lord, we thank you. Um, we thank you for all um, all the, the things that you have put in place so that um, your children stay in touch with you and walk with you uh, and walk in communion with you, Father. We want to come back to that fellowship that you intended from day one with Adam and Eve. We want to walk with you in the cool of the day, um, even more on Shabbat where we stop um, the noise and the distractions around us, good and bad, and just focus on you. Um, yeah, speak to us in this hour, Father. We, we're listening. Your children are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, yeah, welcome everyone to the Shabbat call. So, I'm going to, first of all, um, ask the Rouse, and I think I volunteered Fred. <laughs> if, um, so Fred, uh, we are wanting to hear uh, what, um, what do you guys do to honor the Shabbat and to observe the Shabbat? Share with us. Yeah, thank you, Lena. That's a great question. And I, I think it's great that we, that we share what we're actually doing. Um, <clears throat> We are, uh, well, first of all, I love this hour that we have together, but for us, it's, uh, it's you know, for us, it's Friday morning. It's Friday morning at 7 a.m. So it's not, so we don't actually officially begin our day of rest on Friday morning, but it does set things up in a nice way for the end of the week for us. Um, I, I think most of you know that I am still working in a, a practice, psychiatric practice. I see patients and I'm involved with the, you know, the nurse practitioners who work for me on Monday through Thursday. So that's over by Thursday evening. And so Friday, Saturday, Sunday is just different in terms of what I'm focused on and what I'm doing, which is so the Friday morning is a great, I always look forward to it every week because it sets up things right. But what we do, what, what I do is I try to set aside Sunday, the day Sunday as a day, as mainly a day of rest. What that means for us is, and especially for me, is that anything that is work related or anything that is around the house, you know, chores or, you know, things, errands that have to be run, et cetera, try to get that done, not, you know, before, like by Saturday night, by the time Saturday's over, that's like the, the time for doing that for the week is done. And Sunday, I'm not doing anything work-wise. I'm not doing anything chore-wise around the house. It's mainly, you know, we get up um, on Sunday, we go to church, uh, we go to our special place where we get uh, uh, our favorite salads for lunch and so that we don't, so Sue doesn't have to cook anything. And, um, and then we come back and we're, uh, what we're doing is we're talking with each other, we're praying, we're actually physically resting. We are studying the word, we're, um, we're reading books that we need to read. If there's something we need to, to get up to speed on with uh, you know, the journey that's going on that night, because the journey for us is not Monday morning, it's Sunday night. So, um, so we're, we're preparing for that. We're talking with our family on the phone or visiting with them. Um, so it's a, it's a relational day. It's a day of, of uh, not doing the usual chores and work things, but really trying to be walking in the presence of the Lord. All day long, we're 
we're saying, mm -hmm. Lord, what do you what do you want to say to us? And sometimes for me, it's just a, it's maybe an hour or two of just just maybe I'm going for a walk, maybe I'm sitting in my chair, maybe I'm I'm going for a ride in the car, but I'm just listening to the Lord. Lord, what are you what are you saying to me? What what are you? I'm I'm not giving you my list of things that I need to have done. I want to hear from you. So um, that's that's pretty much our our Sunday. You know, it's not a it's not perfect. Sometimes we're having to teach a class on Sunday. It's at church, so that's not exactly rest. But it's it's we're we're it's it's things where we're focused on the Lord and focused on our family. That's awesome. Great. Um, yeah, so it sounds like definitely more listening time and more yeah. communion time with the Lord. That's really good. Yeah. Thanks which for me, which, which for me, um, I have to have a block of time. I have to have like probably at least an hour to really do that because it takes me a while to just settle in and hear his voice. You know, it's nothing that you can do in five minutes. You really, you really have to just be able to have some time. And it's just so we just set aside, you know, when we're not, I'm just like not going to do work stuff. So I'm not going to get distracted by that. So it's just, it's, it's great. I mean, I just, I love Sundays. Sundays is just a great day. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. All right. Well, we're going to move to the next person is Amy. Hi, Amy Winchester from Arizona. <laughs> Good morning, or good afternoon, good evening. Um, well, for, for me, I was raised in the church, and so Sundays was, you know, we went to church, and we were expected to be in church, but I encountered Christ when I was in college, and it really uh, radically changed my life from, uh, you know, being a more personal thing, wanting to pursue that, so I began, I decided at that point as a student, I was a junior, entering my junior year, uh, I did not do any studying for tests, any uh, classwork at all on Sundays until after 6 p.m., even if I was going to have an exam. And then um, that carried over. Uh, and now, as an instructor, I tell my students, um, I am not available on Sundays. That is my day of worship and my time with my family. So if you have, unless there's an absolute emergency, do not contact me until after 6 or 7 p.m. on Sunday, starting Saturday night, actually, because they're going to come up with all kinds of questions. They're going to email you. They're going to text you. And um, I, I, I explain to them that this is an important day for me. So um, I let them know right from the get-go at the beginning in our uh, class orientation. Um, what we do on Sundays is that uh, it, the, the, the thing with being in nursing is um, I had to work a weekend shift. And so I was a night nurse. If you're a day shift, you had to work either a Saturday or a Sunday. I was a night shifter. So that was a Friday or a Saturday. So I would always work Friday night. And um, could, that way I could fulfill that commitment um, uh, of having to have that weekend. Um, what I do with our family now, since I, as an instructor and I retired from the hospital almost two years ago, um, we, I always do a simple meal, like put on a roast or something that would just can, can cook in the crock pot and we get home. And so I just whip out a cornbread real quick and we have, you know, things like that. And then we spend the afternoon just fellowshipping off and we have all of our 10 of, of our children. We have 10 of our grandchildren and um, six of our eight come over to the house often and we just fellowship. Um, we pray, we've, uh, we've done worship together, and we do, as Fred said, we physically rest. It's, we actually take a nap, uh, and then uh, I go to an evening service, and then I come for the journey group when I get back. So my whole day is filled, but I found more and more uh, the Shabbat's, Shabbat's a little bit harder for me on Fridays, but I think it's important. God is quickening me about the importance of honoring the actual Shabbat. And so once I start school, it'll be difficult for me because I have class on Friday, but um, still remembering I get up early in the mornings. I just it's important to spend that time with the Lord because I feel like I have to be equipped if I'm not filling up with the Lord. I don't have anything to give the students that I'm working with or my family. 
Um, and so uh, that's been really important uh, for me, just those family gatherings, those times spending with the Lord. So I'm up early, uh, early in the morning on Sundays. So okay. thank you. Amy. OK, I have, I'm going to ask you, we're doing um, for those of you who came in late, we're just um, I have a few people lined up and we're just doing uh, quick interviews to see what people what are the different things, practically speak, speaking, people do on Shabbat. So Amy, I'm going to ask you the next question we um, we have here is that, um, well, we know that the Shabbat is a day of resting from works and being in joyful celebration with family and, and um, celebrating God with family in his presence. So which is more meaningful to you uh, in the Shabbat? Is it like resting with God and um, or being in joyful communion with God, with family? Which one is uh, with community, you know, which one would you think is more meaningful for you and why? I think the most meaningful is being in communion with the Lord and experiencing his presence and then carrying that over to experience his presence with our family. Um, because I, I, I want my student, you know, the word says, command your children after you. And you can't do that if you're not experiencing time with the Lord, experiencing his love for you face to face, that presence, that glory presence coming in uh, that's yeah. then going to be Im imparted to them. So I, I think the communion with him, I think, is first. We're celebrating. For me, I'm celebrating him as my creator, as my Lord, as my savior who redeemed me from so much and is continuing to do that. That, that if I'm not communing with him, I'm going to be a dry tree. <laughs> yes. Very good, Amy. Thank you. Okay. Um, how do you keep a family gathering? This is a very personal question from me. How do you keep a family gathering from um, turning into a lot of work? And you shared a little bit about that. Can you tell us more? I mean, you know, so skills, I, it's I, work, I, right? <laughs> It, it, it is work. Um, for me, I just, I'm kind of keep it simple sap. So I'll be thinking, okay, what can I plan? Like something easy, like I'll throw on meatballs in a crock pot, fix the spaghetti. Uh, you already have the bread. You know, it's just really simple. You have a salad. And so you you, you come in and you put it together and it feeds a whole mob or stew or a roast. Those things can all be put on early. So I get up early in the morning and put a crock pot on and, um, and kind of pretty much leave it at that. Um, every once in a while, we will go out to eat as a, as a group or as a family. Um, and then uh, we come home and then uh, just spend time fellowshipping. We, we sit at the table and we visit about, well, what's God doing in your life? Where is he leading you now? What, where, where is he talking to you about your, your jobs? Because those things are important to support one another. So you don't let the, the work of getting ready or clean up or set up or, you know, all that. No, and, you up. and having so many people, most of our kids chip in and we all just chip in on and we use paper plates so it can go right into the trash and uh, <laughs> or paper cups and stuff. So we try not to have a, a big cleanup. All right. That's that's good. Thank you, Amy. Thank you for sharing with us your personal life. Thank you. Um, OK, we're going to move to um, Joy from Australia. Hello, Joy. Hello, everybody. But Joy is in Jerusalem, actually. Oh, OK. <laughs> you can see the Jerusalem stone behind me. Ah. Yes. City of David, <laughs> to be exact. Yeah. Tell me, what does COD stand for? Yes, City of David. Ah. But oh, I, I, think yes. I am Joy. I am Joy here. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, welcome, Joy. Thank you for um, agreeing to do this. Okay, share with us what are the practical ways that you observe Shabbat? Practical ways. Um, well, I can agree with everything that um, Fred and Amy have said thus far. Um, I might just add, though, Shabbat is Shabbat for me, meaning the Saturday, not Sunday. Um, uh, but of course, that's pretty easy here in Jerusalem. Um, I came in April and I've been coming for many, many years. And Fred and Sue, I think you know John and Una here, don't you? So I've been attached to their prayer house for 
Uh, well, since 2005, six, I can't remember how long that is now, but a long time. Well, when it started, I was here from when it started. Um, and it's miraculously kept going over COVID. Um, thanks to John and Una and a few others that have been on the ground. Um, so, yes, um, Friday night Shabbat is something, it's the highlight of our week here. And um, we always have a community dinner. There's four houses in our compound. And tonight, I think we might have about 11 um, for our meal. Um, so we'll just have a lovely time of uh, friendship and fellowship and fun, sometimes worship after, sometimes a message. Uh, but tomorrow in particular, we'll just chill. <laughs> there won't be no commitments. Um, in fact, one of my delights is just to, when I'm here, is just to hang around in my pyjamas. Um, and yeah, just totally, um, you know, yeah, forget everything, uh, not feel uh, obligated to do anything. Yeah, it's the best day of the week for us here. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we all look forward to it. Okay, yeah. tell me, Joy, like there's, um, what are, what aspects of Shabbat you find most enjoyable? You know, when you think, we think of Shabbat as a, as a time of being with the Lord or a time of just resting or a time of communion with family, fellowship and a joyful time. But what would um, you say is the aspect that's- It's all enjoyable? three, Lena. It's all three. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm home, I actually do a, um, a Torah teaching on Zoom. Uh, with a pastor uh, down the Gold Coast and we can have a home group as well uh, back home um, but yeah it is as the others have said a time you know for family friends um, but in particular with the Lord um, Israelis will say Hashem is the most transparent you know and accessible on Shabbat um, and, of course, as you would know, the, the holiest of days next to Yom Kippur for them here. And it's just lovely. I mean, it's so easy to enter into because, you know, uh, the shops close down at 2 o'clock, uh, buses stop, and you just sense this collective sigh <laughs> come over the whole of Jerusalem. And even the Arabs seem to join in with that. You know, it can be very quiet. Um, yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting experiencing Shabbat in Israel. That's cool. It is the best. Um, best. <laughs> how do you um how do you keep the pull of things that didn't get done during the week? You know, you know, different obligations, you know, like I use this as an uh, as an example, being funny, like all the signal messages that you need to catch up on. You know? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> if it's how do you keep the pull? Right? If it's essential, I will. But when you really understand the beauty and the gift of Shabbat, it 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 just goes by the by. Um, there's no problem in not doing anything that you don't need to do. <laughs> I'm not legalistic about it, um, but yeah, I, I don't worry. That That is never a bother. I choose, I, I do actually choose um, to not do what I don't have to do, yeah. That's really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that um, you're so devoted and, and a habit of just resting has been developed. So so those things don't quite have a pull on you, no, like maybe no. a beginner like me. <laughs> well, and my, my greatest heartache really is that the whole world <laughs> doesn't realize how beautiful a Shabbat is. You know, as I said, I prefer to keep Shabbat as Shabbat, but if it's Sunday or another day of the week, um, I, I mean, God commanded it, you know, this day of rest, and it's an appoint appointment with God. 
Um, and just a delight. It is a delight um, to enter into it. No problems yeah. <laughs> at all. Of course. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Joy. Thank you for your time and sharing with us. Okay, I'm going to move to Cassandra. Are you ready for us, Cassandra? <laughs> okay, tell us, Cassandra, what do you do to observe the Shabbat? Well, my Shabbat is uh, a lot different because it seems like I'm working, but it's ministry. But I do, our pastor uh, initiated because African-Americans, we never knew about the feast days and none of that. I mean, we didn't do that traditionally. So like five years ago, he really started uh, admonishing us to, the, to follow the feast days and things of that nature. And Shabbat, he said, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And so uh, we have been now on uh, uh, Saturdays, we have prayer at nine and then we have Shabbat teaching and we go over the Torah reading for that day. And so mm. usually, but on Fridays for me, uh, I'm already, I'm setting up for uh, street ministry as well. So as I'm setting up for street ministry, I look in the global family because we do Shabbat on there and we go over the Torah too. So I listen to the Torah pretty much twice in that time. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm getting stuff prepared for Saturday ministry. And then I go out Saturday ministry and then I get through with that. I get to church and I go and, uh, I do the Shabbat teaching. The only thing that I do, because I'm on the housekeeping committee, I do clean the church. And after that, then usually the rest of the Saturday, I'm on prayer. I'm, I'm, I'm in prayer on Global Family. We, we, did, we I pray all day pretty much on Saturdays. And uh, yeah, and then usually uh, uh, I've been working, trying to get my, my kids involved because they're not really totally involved. So we've been trying to do like food on Sundays. We'll try to get together on Sunday and do things as that way as well to commune with my family. But I need to start calling out more family members on the doing that weekend time and maybe shut the signal off a little bit more. But yeah, that's what mm. I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but then on Mondays, and then I, I really try to sleep on Mondays, but that doesn't always work either. <laughs> yes, I do sleep uh, four hours at least. <laughs> Okay, Cassandra. So it's okay. So we're seeing like there is a variety of things that people do. And it is like, there is a Western Christian kind of still like pull on us, right? Um, but okay, tell me what is, um, do you have like an, uh, uh, like a memorable Shabbat day or something? Oh, yeah, uh, I've got two. I've got two, actually. Uh, all right. when, when we did the sin uh, in Kansas City, uh, that was, you know, the big thing where we, they're sitting on evangelism um, on that on that Shabbat on that Friday. They had a Shabbat service with uh, Dean Reese. Uh, I think that's the name. Dennis I kept with the return. Anyway, I did uh, Shabbat in the tent with him. We broke bread and we did. The, and it was just awesome. That was like the first time that I did like a gathering with other people. And then the second one was civil righteousness. I uh, had a Shabbat where we sat mill and the same guy was there again. I'm like, this is awesome. And he had came from Kansas City to do part of the civil righteousness part. And we had around the table where we sat and he, you know, really explained, you know, what the Shabbat. And then we've got a family here called uh, the, the Tuckers. They minister out of uh, with Haiti. And they do Shabbat as well. So we had a whole dinner prepared for us and we sat around and, and just uh, blessed each other. Uh, the husbands blessed the wives and the blessed the wives and they read, uh, uh, we had oh, Jonathan uh, Thomas JT uh, sang this song to his wife, Holly, uh, the Proverbs 31. And so that was just awesome to be in the presence of all that. And the, the children that were there blessed their mom. And, and then the husband again blessed the wife. And then we had a, uh, one single man, he blessed all the single people that were there uh, saying encouraging words. So that was just really awesome. That was a blessing that I really appreciate. So I've had some great memorable uh, Shabbats. And so those two are definitely in my in my heart, but I still got to work on get my family in there. I'd like to do a family one as well. Mm. That, that sounds so good, Cassandra. It's like um, kind of experiencing more of the Jewish tradition and that feel of it. and and. Uh, yeah, that aspects that's more yeah Jewish. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, all right, tell me. I'm gonna ask you the same question. I think I asked Amy. So, um, 
uh, I think well, of all the different aspects of Shabbat, uh, what makes it, what aspect do you find more, most meaningful to you? The, 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 the quiet time, because I'm really learning, because I do a lot of talking and, and things and I'm pretty busy. And I, so I'm really learning to sit and listen. And uh, we've always been taught to read the word out loud. So, uh, but to, to read the word, but to sit and listen is one thing that I've been really, and I'm really starting to try to practice not going to the grocery stores. I definitely don't do any housework on the, the weekend at all uh, or any yard work. I definitely mm -hmm. don't do anything that, but to have that quiet time where I'm sitting and listening because I'm always praying or pouring out. So I have to have some time to, to sit yeah. So, yeah. That, so that's, that's right. Good. And then community, because yeah. I do have community, because I'm, I'm always around community as well. I have both. I have, as I say, I do both, but I definitely have community to be around. But to, to really, but because of this question, I'm going to have to start doing more community Shabbat. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, let's challenge each other, right? To do, um, even if it's for a change, but to stay on the on the topic of uh, the things that are important to God and, and what the Shabbat means to him. Thank you, Cassandra. Um, we have one more person lined up, but um, Fred, can I um, ask you a question? <laughs> I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna put you on the spot if you don't mind, okay. please, and okay, ask you a question. Second time now today is the second. Time. Yes, I know. That's what happens when you're a leader. You have to be prepared. <laughs> okay. All right. Tell me this. Um, so one of one of the things that I face, uh, the questions that I face when we talk about Shabbat is people, um, especially from a Western Christian community, right? Um, what I hear is, um, well, uh, you know, every day is dedicated to the Lord. Every day is what I do is I um, I'm trying to do what the Lord wants me to do. And my time is dedicated to him. What um, what would you respond to this? type of kind of um, mentality sort of or well that's that's true it's not that you're it's not that you're not dedicated to the lord on the other days but but there is there is built into you know the word uh, a day of rest and a time of rest even god rested on the seventh day and so <clears throat> the time of rest is not just important in terms of physical rest but that is when we're when we're away from our routine and all the, the routine things that we're doing, we're, you know, God wants us to spend time with him. And, uh, and, we're, and, it's, and it's just spending time in his presence. And um, we can spend time in his presence when we're working, but it's very hard to, uh, well, first of all, it's, first of all, it's biblical. God rested on the seventh day. So, but no, that's number one. But number two, it's also really important that we take some time where we're just hearing from the Lord, where we're not, where we don't have an agenda with him and, uh, and, and where we're saying, Lord, what is on your heart? What's, what's on your heart for me? What's on your heart for my family? What's on your heart for, for your people? And, uh, and then just, just spending time, just being thankful and giving thanks to him. And in the Western culture, we don't do that. We just don't do that. Mm -hmm. We don't. You know, it's it's like we're always feeling like we need to be doing something, and uh, and if we're not doing anything, then we're on our you know on our phones, uh, on social media, or checking emails, or you know, uh, going on to uh, the Global Watch signal messages and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we 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 we've got to. It's it's a discipline, and it's really important to have that discipline. Otherwise, there's no you know you can be dedicated to doing stuff for God, but not really be, um, not really be in his presence and not really be, um, you know, abiding in the vine. Um, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. One thing that I thought of was like, um, uh, it's the same thing when um, we think that really that uh, in my finances, it's, 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 um, it's all dedicated to the Lord. It's in his service. It's all, and yet um, there is that 10% that is set apart that is unquestionably, um, you know, uh, preset, measured, and and set aside for, uh, 
you know, to for the Lord. Um, so it's the same thing with one day of the week. And for me, it's a time to also regroup and rethink, um, look over the week um, uh, with him um, and look over my life with him and reset goals with him and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it becomes a cop out sort of, and then we don't do any of it. Um, right. Yeah. Amy, you wanted to, you have input into this? Go ahead. Yeah, I do just a couple of things. Um, the, I, I had an opportunity when I was working in the hospital about that, you know, our need here in the Western culture, because it's so, you know, I can't tithe, I'm in doubt, I can't do this. And just sharing with people that profess to be Christians, you know, it, you're never going to get out of debt if you don't tithe and uh, honor the Lord and trust him. But an experience that I had uh, was I had transferred into a different department and um, this uh, a black nurse from Kenya worked the day shift and I worked nights and so, um, and then she switched to night shift. And so um, I found out that um, she was a Christian and so we would talk and share. And, and I said, so what do you fellowship? And she said, well, I, I really can't go to church because I have to work every weekend. I said, no, you don't. You don't have to work every weekend because there are guidelines. And so it turned out when I began to investigate the, the two other nurses on the night shift closed ranks and they never, they would always book. The, so they were off the weekends. And I said, that's not fair. So I had to actually go to the higher ups whom I knew because I'd been at that hospital for a long time and went to bat for her. And she, you know, they, that their administration uh, told those nurses, you will be not doing that. And she was able then to go. So I think it's a place too for us as we begin to really appreciate Sundays, helping other Christians to value what Sunday is, um, is about, um, take that, make that intentional choice. Hey, this is important. You have to have this day of rest. Rest. It is a time for them to commune with other fellow believers, and um, and they got mad at me. You know, they were really ticked off at me. But you know, we need to be in that place to support one another. That it is a day of rest. We need this time with the Lord. We need this time to commune with others. So I just wanted to kind of mention that that, that in agreement with what Fred was sharing. In our culture here, especially in America, it's so drive, drive, go, go. It's not important. It sets us apart. Being celebrating Shabbat sets us apart as the people of God, that we honor the creator, we honor our freedom that we have in Christ. Yeah, yeah, that's a good answer, Amy. Thank you. Yeah, it, it washes out, it just becomes if you if we don't uh, make the effort, if we don't set it apart, then it it, it gets um then it's gone. It's not like if we said oh, just find a day and pick the day and make it a Shabbat day. And then it becomes a no day because it's just not God's way. There's no anointing on it. There's no, um, uh, yeah, it just doesn't happen. It, it becomes something that gets diluted, dismissed, uh, not valued and, and not done. Um, all right. So we have one more person, Dahlia. <laughs> what are you? Yes. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hello, Dahlia. Okay, tell us, Dahlia, what do you do? I know, so you are a person who, um, I'm gonna say half Jew, half Westerner, let's say, <laughs> because half of you is, or like um, you are in, uh, dedicated to Jewish ways and you observe Jewish customs. And at the same time, you're, you have, you're in a culture that's more Western. And so tell us, what do you do to observe the Shabbat? Very good question. You know, over the years, I've been with Messianic congregations, and it wasn't as much an issue as it is now because my church is not Messianic, but they really love Israel. So what I do, Friday night, we do have prayer with my church. My, my pastor loves prayer. <laughs> Thank God. He really, it's amazing how much he gets us all in prayer. Um, so every Friday night, I have that. And then um, I've also more, you know, during the COVID period, I didn't get to do outreach. And now, you know, for years I did outreach with the San Francisco House of Prayer. And there's now again, I can, and it's really wonderful on Saturday to do that. I really feel like that is the most meaningful thing I can do. You know, the Lord used to heal on 
Shabbat, I think, to be able to share the good news, pray with people, whatever, you know, the Lord leads. Um, so, and like tomorrow I get to go to with uh, the San Francisco House of Prayer Evangelist Lead. Um, we're, we're to go to Jerry Garcia Amphitheater. They're having a big, uh, you know, he always checks what's going on in the city. So it's once lots of fun. And I can take my bird, ooh, I'm on Saturdays. That's really a blessing. On Sunday, I also do outreach with my church after church, but I can't take them because I'm in church, you know, and I live over in Oakland now. I, my church is in San Francisco. So um, Saturday is especially now, you know, especially not COVID, not getting to do outreach for with the groups for so long. I really, really appreciate it. It's such a joy now. And with the House of Prayer, I worked with them for years. So I, I'm just really, really thrilled about that. Um, and, uh, and I also am thrilled about the Global Watch having this Friday morning because, you know, it does give me a little more, I feel like I'm tied more to Israel. And uh, I love doing this Friday morning, uh, <laughs> remembering Shabbat too. And anytime I get, of course, the time with the Lord is number one. It always says we've got to have that quiet time. And, and that's my favorite time of all. Um, so that's my Shabbat. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's cool. So that's, so you, if I ask what's the most um, enjoyable time is that, um, is that what you said? It's, you said it's most meaningful to serve on the street. I think, what would you say is the most enjoyable aspect? Well, it's got to be time with the Lord, number one, but I am thrilled that I also get outreach. Uh, I mean, that's one of the big reasons I went to Hernhood and I got so blessed to at Hernhood. Those, they have such a heart <laughs> there, their servants, you know, for missions. It was just such a blessing, you know, and, and, and the closeness to the Lord putting, you know, first up there, you, you know, in outreach, we've got to have that. You, you, you got to have him first. You can't really, you know, in prayer, you got to, you, you get, you can only give it's the, yeah. it's to the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, do you, um, do you have like a creative way of uh, including unbelievers in this experience of Shabbat? Well, I would say uh, the outreach is a creative way. That's a wonderful way. Uh, over the years different things I've done different things you know but right now that's what it is you know there's different seasons in our life um I've had the Shabbat dinners in the past I've done different things where you invite people that need encouragement you know to your home it's really sweet um, oh that's nice yeah uh and that's beautiful and prayer a lot of prayer for families beautiful for Shabbat dinners when I think Joy really knows listening to her the meaning of that it's it's really profound our children you know big big part of uh of the word is um sharing our faith with our own family blessing our family right yeah that's good that's good so you um so you invite unbelievers you pray with them um even um, family, whether believers or unbelievers, and praying with them, and you make it a point to do that on Shabbat. That's pretty good. That's a good, um, good idea to invite people over, uh, especially maybe unbelievers, and have that time of fellowship with them. Um, do you like recognize some aspect of Shabbat when when they're over, when you invite them over? Well, what I used to do was the dinner that uh, Joy was talking oh, about. And, okay. and we had a lot of singles over for years. And, uh, uh, and, and we went, we have a, there's a book that's beautiful. I don't, I should, I don't know it right off the top of my head that goes through all of the beautiful Shabbat blessings and songs. Not all of them, but a, it's a really beautiful book. You can really do that. Uh, and, and it's, okay. it, it's a family time that they're blessed and they feel included and loved and I see it's a, lot yeah. of work. it's a lot of work I don't cook I don't really cook now so much but that, yeah just encourage everyone if if you're up that's to that. what I find difficult yeah <laughs> yeah I, I tried to do that, that with my, husband. my husband and I did that for years it was beautiful yeah 
Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's one of the things I struggle with is when I do invite people over for fellowship and stuff, but then it does become hard work for me. So this is why I have the question of Amy. Yeah, like uh, it takes a, a well-planned uh, sort of, so that it doesn't become work, um, but that it's part of enjoying the Shabbat together. Um, yeah, not turning it into good work, hard work. Thank you, Dahlia. Um, we're gonna end with communion. So if um, you don't have your elements ready, this is a good time to go get it. Um, but before we have a little bit of time, so I'm thinking, um, so the, the goal of today for me at least was to understand practical ways to observe the Shabbat um, uh, while we really stay with the heart of God's purpose and objective for the Shabbat. And um, there are different ways that we really can honor God and not, not make it into a traditional thing. So I wanted to hear different things people do. And um, so we heard from four or five people today. Um, we have some time, so I'm gonna open it up. Um, you can raise your hand if, um, if you wanna share, uh, give us like one practical thing that you do um, on, a, on a Shabbat day. Uh, to observe, you know, the day. Um, and I, I can start us off, I shared about this today, the only thing that uh, I'm uh, doing that is, um, that's different um, is um, kind of like Fred, I, I want it to be a time that I'm listening to the Lord, um, but I make it a point to be really more tuning in, practicing more, the tuning into him all day long. So all day long, I'm either singing to him in my heart or I'm, um, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm learning, I'm taking the time to listen to him more uh, during, throughout the day on that day because I'm not working, because I don't have this obligation that I'm chasing to make it happen. I actually have my Armenia watch on Saturday. Sometimes I wonder if that's wrong, but anyway, uh, for, but the rest of the day, I try to listen, to listen more to the Holy Spirit. Um, so Petra, I think you had your hand up and I missed it. Did you want to share something before we go to Denise? I, I just have a, 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 an addition because maybe you don't know, but in Germany, the shops are closed on Sundays. And uh, since you've seen <laughs> on Her in Herrnhut, you probably haven't recognized it so much because it's a village after all, but in all big cities in Germany, and this is part of honoring the Shabbat. I mean, you as Christians, you don't have to keep it on a Friday night, but at least one day a week. And that's still out of that uh, Chris uh, Jewish Christian tradition that there should be one day in the week that's where right. you should keep a break, you know? And in Germany, they're trying to, um impeach that law of the, the uh, Sunday law basically so they're trying to open the shops again but actually when I realized it it was when I had to work in England and in England 24 hours seven days a week the shops were open and I just thought oh my gosh what, what a blessing there was in that time I was not even a Christian you know so I even <laughs> knew that this was a blessing even though I was not a Christian or anything connected with religion or anything like that <laughs> But yeah. this was just the addition I wanted to make and also what Cassandra shared. I think it's so beautiful, you know, when, um, yeah, especially single women, you know, when they're actually valid and, and uh, there's the Proverbs 31 uh, writing or, or reading out in, in the Shabbat tradition, you know, the woman of valor. And I think this is such a blessing when, when somebody reads it for you and actually the man is doing that. So if it's, if it's an elder of the church or whoever, you know, I think this is such a blessing and that's the input I wanted to give. And yeah, cool. Denise has also her hand raised, Lena. So <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Petra. Okay, Denise. Hi guys. Um, I'm a little late, so I'm not sure if anybody shared this, but um, you know, um, in, in Jewish homes, uh, they not only celebrate the incoming of Shabbat, but they also celebrate and mark the exiting of Shabbat. And so then oh. the very first, so then the very first day of the week, it's day one toward Shabbat. It's day two toward the Shabbat. So mm -hmm. it, it oh. really is one of those things where we should have a mindset that 
as we go into our day of rest, as we come out of our day of rest, that even as we come out, we're yearning again for the day of rest because it, 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 it's the rehearsal for the beautiful millennial uh, time of incredible peace and beauty with the Lord as we rule and reign with him. And so, um, you know, what I found in practical ways is that by Wednesday, I know what I'm going to put in my crock pot on Friday nights. I know what I'm going to, I know what I'm going to have done by Thursday afternoon. I plan it um, from Sunday on so that when Friday night comes, when the Shabbat comes, I'm not rushing. I'm not, I'm not screeching to a halt. I'm, I'm prepared and I can enter in and take that deep sigh and that deep, that deep uh, breath and let that deep breath out as I uh, begin to enjoy my family in a different way and enjoy the presence of the Lord in a more meaningful way through that um, Shabbat time. So it's really something that we should actually have on our mind daily. Yeah. How are we even preparing ourselves for the day of rest, for coming into his presence? So I find that very meaningful for me. Yes. Yeah. I learned that too, Denise. You have to really plan it. It took a while to break the habit and and prepare in advance for that. There is not going to get any work done that day. So get ready in advance. And yeah, I'm prepared for what you, how you want to observe the Shabbat prepare in advance. That's really good advice. Thank you, Denise. Yes. Anyone else wants to share um, something, a meaningful thing that they do on Shabbat that they want to share with us? Or how do you observe the Shabbat? I'm going to be like Fred and pick on people. Okay. I think Katya has something. Volunteer. Yeah, I'm happy to volunteer. Um, <laughs> it's two things that come to mind. Um, I'm a gardener, I'm self-employed, so I'm fairly flexible. But with the times, for me, uh, Shabbat on Friday is um, two o'clock, no, three o'clock in the afternoon. So I now have rearranged my Fridays to be able to actually join. And then from now on, I, I try to come on here and then it's my Shabbat and I try to do the Saturday instead of a Sunday because Sundays seem to be very busy with church and it's always doing, doing, doing. And, and um, I, I found that so frustrating. I keep thinking, Lord, I want to spend time with you. And I'm a doer anyway. Naturally, I'm happy and I thrive on those things. But again, I, um, I've learned more and more or I've been drawn to actually be still and listen to him and I, I you know I had such an expectation also to go to handhood because I kept thinking I don't want to have an agenda I don't want to have an agenda I just want to seek God I want to hear from him and if possible audible <laughs> so you know it's things like that I really want to experience him so um and I think he did put that yearning and longing into my heart he really keeps drawing us and actually increasing it's almost like come on a little bit more a little bit more and then you, you keep going it's almost like a fade <laughs> but it's so beautiful at the same time it starts consuming you and um, when I was in Hanhut, what I really enjoyed was the, the they had the fire on the altar mm -hmm. and uh, what happened was um and I know, don't know whether you've seen the video clip there's a video clip so it's a 24 7 prayer they set up in um, <laughs> memory of the three 300 years this year so so we we had the the opportunity to join them and actually they freed some slots especially for us because they knew we were there and we were keen and it is so beautiful and an hour and at the night um I did some night shifts and um it was almost like an hour was gone in the moment and I, I really felt like I want to stay longer and an hour is not enough and you know you start not caring about sleep because there is so much beauty in it it really is and you feel almost like walking on clouds <laughs> the day was although things were busy and you know and we would still you know do a lot of things it was just so different and and also to and I went in, I, I felt like, Lord, I'm not going to speak to you. I don't mean to be rude, but there's my notepad, there's a pen. And whatever I hear, I start writing things down. 
because I used to say, oh, I don't hear from the Lord. And uh, ah. I stopped saying that <laughs> because I believe we can all do it. We just yes. need to understand what we, you know, how he's going to speak. And even if words come to my mind, it doesn't make sense. I kept writing them down. So that was one thing. And I, I really do want to continue with that. Uh, it's just finding out, you know, what, what at the time of the day. And, uh, and this morning, actually, or during the day today at work, because I'm a gardener, I can sing and praise him and all that. <laughs> and this is so great. I'm so blessed with that. But I kept thinking, my house is so small. Where can I actually have that little special corner? where I can do that praying and waiting on him in the morning. And I realized I'm going to just turn a chair around and, and have then, you know, towards the wall, I realized, oh yeah, I could do that. Sounds a bit weird, but if you knew my house, you would, you would understand. So, um, so yeah, that, that's that. Um, there was something else, but I forgot, maybe it wasn't that important to share now. <laughs> so um, yeah, that, that's. It will come, it will come to my. Yeah, that's very creative, Katya. Thank you. And that's really refreshing to hear. All right. <laughs> okay, do we now we better move right into communion. Um, and so I asked um, Dahlia to lead us uh, with the bread and Cassandra with the wine. Um, you ready, Dahlia? Yes, uh, I want to share one of the most meaningful, probably the most meaningful thing I got at Hernet was realizing we're the holiest, the holiest because of him. He did it all. You know, if you think about it, we just need to receive that. So as we read, uh, I wanted to read this passage for us, First John, um, that we know so well, First John 1, 8 through 10. Uh, but as we read it, you know, anything that's, that we need to repent of, this is also what we do, what we do when we do communion. If there's anything, any strongholds in our life, I think of mine, I, finances, I, 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 I need to be better with my spending habits. That's probably spirit of greed. Anything with our children, uh, any, you know, anything with our relationships, anything with forgiveness, that we just take it to him and know we can rest in him, that he's our deliverer. That's his name, Yehoshua, our deliverer. He's our righteousness, and we are holy in him. And this is how we rest in him. Receive that. Give it to him. And he can break off the strongholds, anything at all. So as we do that, let's, we'll all take that quiet time as we read eat this bread. And think about what it is that you might have a stronghold in your life that you can just receive his covering, receive his righteousness. Okay, and this is verse John 1, 8. If we claim not to have sin, we're deceiving ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we acknowledge our sins, then since he's trustworthy and just, he will forgive them and purify us from all wrongdoing. If we claim we have not been sinning, we're making him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord, for your great atonement, and with your stripes we're healed, and we're delivered, and we're your whole holy unto you because of you, Yeshua. Take eat. this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. Abba, Father, we offer up this cup, the cup of the blood of your new covenant. We thank you right now in the name of Yahshua, Lord God, for your blood. Your blood was shed seven times, just like the slaughtered lamb that they would bring into the altar, Lord God. So we thank you that your blood was written in, your, in the word that while you prayed, drops of blood fell to the ground. And they put a crown of thorns on your head. They ripped your beard off. They scourged you. They whipped you 39 stripes, Lord God, 39. So we know your body was beaten beyond human recognition. And as they whipped you, the blood had to splatter on the ground. 
And Father, they said they nailed you through the cross, Lord God. And then the scriptures let us know that they pierced you in your sight and blood and water came streaming down. Father, we thank you for you. We thank you for sending your son, Yahshua, to die on a cross that his blood was shed. And when you see us now, you see that same blood. When we've given our lives totally over to you, you see that same blood in each and every one of us. And so we thank you as we take this cup. We do this in remembrance of you. Hallelujah. The blood still works and it never loses its power. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. This was so meaningful. Um, yeah. Okay, Fred, all yours. <laughs> well, thank you, Lena. That, this is just a great hour. It's just wonderful to hear people's, how people celebrate Shabbat and uh, giving me some ideas and some thoughts going forward. And uh, um, thank you for leading us this hour. I think my lovely wife, Susan, has some announcements and then we'll close just just a quickie we're going to start up the watches again sunday starting sunday 6 a.m jerusalem time that's our journey group and uh, we would like to hear from people who were not there as well as people who were at heronhood to hear about their experience uh, things that were meaningful nuggets that they're taking back we want to really uh, nurture the seed that was deposited in all of us either whether you're there or whether you're watching live stream. So, um, yeah, we'll be doing that. We'll start yeah. it up again. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually Monday, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time. It's Sunday. Yeah. Night for, yeah. Okay. Uh, so no healthcare watch. I would uh, contact Robert Doe on that. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, let us have... Um, uh, let's have uh, Petra. Why don't you... Um, close us off in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we have this time together, that we commune with you. Thank you, Father, for all those great testimonies. And thank you, Lord, that you have given us a Shabbat, that we can come into that special holy presence with you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that uh, you knitted us together and that you allowed us to come to your table to partake in this cup of salvation and this cup of mercy. And thank you, Lord, that you have given us this special place. And we pray for Israel, we pray for Jerusalem, that they may find their place and their position at the table so that we from the nations can take our seats around this table. And we want to lift up, especially now, uh, Israel as they enter into their Shabbat now. And that you will give them rest and peace, Lord Jesus, especially those who are on the watches from Israel right now. Father, thank you that you have um, made this time possible and that we can come to you. Father, bless Israel, bless Jerusalem, and bless this one new man between Jews and Gentiles. In Jesus' name, amen. And all God's people said, amen. Everybody unmute yourself. Amen. 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 Shabbat shalom. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Bye, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Bye. Thank you, Lima. Shabbat shalom. Blessings. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Shabbat shalom from Singapore. Shabbat shalom. Hey, go ahead, Singapore.